hello and welcome to Camp Xbox, where we talk about all things Xbox from the original to the Series X, and today we will be reviewing Ford Racing 2, a budget racing title featuring only Ford models. It was originally released on the Xbox on November 3rd, 2003, but was also available on the PC, Mac, and PlayStation 2. The original game did not make an appearance on the Xbox console because it came out just a little bit earlier than its launch and was only released on PS1 and PC in 2000. Ford Racing 2 was developed by Razorworks and published by Gotham Games in North America. It's actually one of the last games released by Gotham Games before their closure. Ford Racing 2 was originally released as a budget title, and it shows. While the type of game is not as common nowadays, it's more prevalent in the past as a way to offer consumers a cheaper alternative to more polished AAA titles, while still providing an enjoyable experience. Going into the game, I had pretty low expectations as budget racing titles tend to be fairly bare bones in terms of content. However, I was pleasantly surprised to find that Ford Racing 2 actually offers a fairly enjoyable racing experience, despite the limited amount of content. Ford Racing 2 is an arcade racing game, making it easy to pick up and play with simple controls. This game features over 30 models of Ford cars to race, including some classic models in addition to newer ones at the time. The challenge mode is the primary game mode where you can unlock cars by completing challenges. There is also the option to set up free races using any unlocked tracks or cars. Additionally, local multiplayer is available for racing with friends. The challenge mode in this game provides a satisfying amount of variety in its challenges. I appreciated that it wasn't just a series of simple races, but rather included game modes such as time trials, elimination races, which task you with not coming into the last two places each lap, and even a cone challenge where you must drive through cones to gain back lost time. All of these challenges are straightforward and quick, giving the game a nice pacing and a sense of progress as you unlock new cars. However, it is worth noting that you can complete this mode in just a few play sessions, making it a relatively short experience. Despite this, I found the mode to be well executed and enjoyable, but I do wish there was another slightly deeper game mode available. The driving feel in this game is solid, with each car model having varying speeds and slightly different handling. Despite the lack of depth and controls, the handling feels smooth and makes for a great arcade racing experience. However, the game is also quite easy, with even the harder difficulties not offering much of a challenge. While this may be fine for the early stages, it can lead to a slightly dull experience as you progress through the game. You tend to end up at the front of the pack multiple laps in, and it just becomes a little dull over time. Overall, the driving mechanics are well executed, but could benefit from a greater challenge. The track layouts in this game, though, offer a refreshing variety and a fun racing experience. While the classic oval race tracks are easy and enjoyable, it's the more adventurous tracks, such as the jungle or the streets of San Francisco, that provide the most excitement. Each track is designed with attention to detail and captures stunning vistas, showcasing a variety of layouts that keep the racing experience interesting. The inclusion of tunnels and hills in each of these tracks pop out and really stand out in unique ways. While the environments could have used more detail and felt somewhat barren, the background and theme touches are impressive. The western theme levels, for instance, stood out to me because they have really nice ghost town buildings you drive through, and you end up traveling on a railroad in one of them that I thought was a lot of fun. In addition to the track layouts, you also get a really nice selection of excellent looking car models. Since the development team focused exclusively on Ford cars, I feel like they were able to capture the vehicles really well. The car models look great and each one stands out and it really adds to the race having something that nice to look at. And regarding the sound design, while nothing really stands out here, it does a good job of blending the car noises into the ambience of the areas that you are racing in. As for the music, it is split into three different genres you can switch between, which is rock, funk, and house. 
While the house and funk tracks are solid and energetic, adding a nice hit of fun to the game, the rock tracks are generic and feel extremely cheap. I was not a fan of these tracks. However, what makes the music stand out is the ability to use custom soundtracks, which is one of my all-time favorite features of the Xbox. You can just take your ripped music from CDs and play them while you race, which I think adds a whole nother layer of an enjoyment to this game. And it is worth noting that this game was released during a time when Xbox Live was still in its early stages and online racing wasn't as prevalent in every game release. While it did offer some online features such as leaderboards to post your lap times against other players, it did not have online racing functionality on the Xbox. However, the game's leaderboards are still supported if you are a member of the Insignia Xbox Live project and I think it offers a great challenge for players. The leaderboard system allows you to compete against other players online, and it's impressive to see some of the insane times that people have achieved. I found myself returning to the game trying to shave off precious seconds from my lap times and climb the ranks of the leaderboards. I even got a few times higher on the leaderboards and you can find me under the name Camp Xbox if you decide to play this game. And if you manage to beat any of my times, which honestly won't be too hard, make sure to let me know in the comments, I would love to see that. And overall, Ford Racing 2 is a solid budget arcade racing game that provides a good dose of racing fun for a few hours. While its graphics and controls are fairly standard, it offers a good variety of tracks with interesting layouts that capture different vistas, the car models look great and are well captured, the music can be hit or miss but the custom soundtrack feature is always a winner in my book, so I think it's a solid racing option for racing fans looking for a good bit of fun. And on my ranking list of all of the original Xbox games, Ford Racing comes in at number 27. It's placed just below Sega GT as Sega GT offers a much deeper racing experience with way more features. However, I did place it above Haunted Mansion as I found it to be a more enjoyable and replayable game than Haunted Mansion. So that about wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment below if you have any memories with this game or if you're interested. And I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.